Okay, welcome to part 3 of the Breath of the Wild playthrough. In the last video, we activated the tower and talked to the old man, as well as a bunch of stuff that somehow made the video t um, tw 20 minutes. But, um, using, using a Shukia Slate on this um, slide here, make, even if you haven't beat the shrine, you can still teleport to it as long as you use a Shukia Slate on this slide. Um, there, and like I said at the end of the last video, there is a glitch that allows you to just flip through on the shrine the shrines using this shield jump now it's I don't I'm not good at with this however and also there is a day night cycle so when night does show up then um yeah I just can't do this one like that was close I was starting to phase in When night does show up, it gets darker, and also there's a, and there are also some, oops, there are also some skeleton, um, enemies that can just pop up. Right now it's just the goblins, but soon it could be like Lizel, Lizels, and also, the full name is Lizel Foss, and also some moblins. Okay, that was close. Okay, maybe I'll try it on the shrine that I didn't activate. Maybe it's just because I activated it that I just can't clip through. But anyway, I wasted a bunch of time on that. But um, let's get in the shrine. During when you're in the shrine, the day night cycle is still um up. Okay, it still applies, but um, there's nothing like day or night that affects it, like. Whether it's day or night doesn't affect the shrine, it's pretty much always the same. And here we get our first room magnesis. And like I explained before, you can lift you can control metal objects including weapons and bows and chests. Magnesis, unlike the other rooms, Magnesis doesn't have an upgraded version of it. Because like it it, it, you know, it just like lifts up metal stuff, there's nothing that can be upgraded for it. Normally, like, everyone, normally, like, Magnesis is, like, the shrine everyone does first. Because it's, like, the one the old man points out and also the closest. Oh, I never actually noticed that this metal box is back here. There's, like, nothing behind it, but, um, normally for this puzzle, you, like, normally just push this metal box through. And here we have a small guardian. The, like... A small mo moving guardian. Most of the small guardians in um, Breath of the Wild have like weapons, but however, this one specifically only has like a laser that I can shoot. Most other ones have like guardian swords, guardian shields. You can hide behind the laser, and you can also save durability by just using the box to um, protect you. I'm pretty sure it does a lot of damage on normal mode. You can also move the box to protect you from it, and you pretty much just bonk it on your, bonk it on its head to kill it. These like first floor shrines are extremely like easy. There's a chest up there that you can use magnesium to open once you're in range, and you pretty much just move this um, door from that side to the other side. And now we can get the chest. Oh, also did I mention? Um, hold up. Oh, my inventory is full. Um, hold up. Let's just ignore that. I'll give it this bow because I already shot a couple of arrows out of it. That means the durability will be weaker. But you can also throw chests off cliffs. As well as whatever this thing is. Um, let's just equip a bow because less damage. I think it's what this game thing is with like games of durability is that I always use a weapon with less damage because it like I like prefer like saving the weapons with more damage for later however I still never use the weapons that do more damage throughout my entire time playing the game so I kind of just keep that as a collector's item um you have proven to pr pr 
possess the resolve of to heal hero after each I am Oman Ah, the creator of this shrine. After each shrine you get like one of those people. I'm a humble monk blessed with no sight of God. With the sight of God's I am dedicated to help those who with your arrival my duty is now fulfilled. In the name of God, highly allow me to bestow this gift upon you. Please accept the spirit or but after each shrine you get um a like a monk like that shows up who can't move in this place and you get a spirit orb each time put into your chest as part of whatever ritual they're doing. Um Spirit Orbs can increase your how your hearts by one or your stamina by like one fifth I believe. One fifth of wheel each time you deposit four um spirit orbs into a goddess Hylia statue by doing a certain ritual. But now we have magnesium, so now we can get those chests from outside. And it's oh the old man wants to talk to us, unfortunately. It seems you have managed to get your hands on the spirit orb well done. Paraglider, please. I encourage you to slow down for a moment, my courageous friend. The appearance of those two towers and the awakening of this shrine. Hmm. It's all connected to us, so you can so you carry on the hip there. Paraglider, please. I have yet to finish speaking. Long ago, a highly advanced tribe known as the Sheikah tribe inhabited these lands. The great power of their wisdom saved the kingdom time and time again. But their ancient technology disappeared long ago, or it, so it is said. It is interesting how the thing a son like that survived this time hidden away in a shrine. Hmm. These shrines are tucked away in numerous places all across the land. On this plateau alone, I believe there's still three more. Bring me a treasure from each of these shrines and I shall grant you a power rather. That wasn't the deal. Oh well, I suppose I changed my mind. I'm sure it won't be a problem for a young go getter like you. Since I'm feeling generous, I'll also teach you a trick for finding shrines. It's always best to survey the area by looking around from a high point. Let's see here. How about you make your way to the top of the tower again? Are you joking? Oh ho ho. I'm afraid not, but do not worry about it. Another little trick to share with your, your effort. Take a look at your map of your Sheikah's Lady. Oh. See those blue icons? You should recognize the cave where you woke the shrine and came from the tower. You can travel instantly to any of with the Sheikah's Light. At least he says it in a way that doesn't break the fourth wall because... The Sheikah's Light does actually like allow us to teleport. It's not just like some random teleport thingy. Or so I heard quite some time ago. I do not know if it actually works as such. Oh yeah, um... That end car kind of ruins it. But you can also break these metal boxes and, and get what's inside by just doing that. And we get a roasted bass. Okay, these enemies right here are ba are bats. They're called keys. They they can come in ice, fire, and electric, and they can just come in huge hordes. They are incredibly like in the hordes. You can pretty much just bomb arrow them. If you just like shoot them one by one, they're there are just like too many of them. They don't like actually like when they're in hordes. They don't actually like fall on attack you. They just like occasionally just like swoop and do damage to you. And here's like this um here's a stick that was supposed to go over there in the swamp area that I just cheese um but um there are electric keys, ice keys, and fire keys. You can pretty much hit every one of them with a weapon besides the electric keys who are quite unique and especially annoying. Um, I wonder if we just drop it on this, will that save some time? Yes it does. And we get some arrows. Well, another big bass, whatever it's called. Okay, we, there is a Korok over here. Oh, it's like coming really dark now. There is a metal ball under the swamp where we can, um... Just magnesis it into this tree, and then a Korok will show up. Oh, by the way, all Koroks have like the same line of Yahaha, you found me. 
But anyway. You see like how cool the graphics look for like a Switch game. Like normally Nintendo doesn't care much about the graphics and stuff. By the way, there's like groups of up here we have our first skeleton enemies here. Um you can't if you like you can like, you need to hit them in order to knock their heads off their body, then once you do that, you can pretty much just hit their heads once, and it'll, and it'll kill them. You can also um, disembody them and take their body parts once you um, kill them, once you kill them. There's a thing is with these um, Bacalvas is that their bodies fight back until you kill their head. Which is annoying, but their heads only one HP. You can also just straight up, um, um, shoot them with your bow immediately to just kill them. Oh wait, the boxes respawn from over there. We're not gonna destroy them again. Okay, now we're gonna make our way to the bomb trial. Actually, there are some enemy camps over here and there. That I'm gonna deal with first. Well, some spare arrows here. I guess these are just a guaranteed spawn because if the cutscene and Moby saves will just despawn them by now. So, getting a bunch of free arrows, we're at 37 now. But anyway, there, there is no reward for being these with cobblings, but um, there are a bunch here. And you can pretty much just roll this rock down to explode TNT, which will kill them. Which this Bokoblin is stupidly running towards the TNT. But yeah, they're dead now. And we also get a seared steak as well as a free Boko Cub. Oh, I can't carry any more weapons. Um, I'll get get rid of you. Yep, seared steak. You can sit by fires in order to pass time. You can go the morning, noon, and night. And look at how. Look at just how the place looks. Okay, normally with these um, skull enemy camps is that normally there's like one or two scouts outside, as well as a bunch of the cobblers inside. And if you pretty much do it right, you can just snipe the person inside. And as long as they don't blow their horn, the enemies won't notice you unless you just run straight past it, like I'm doing now, but like if you like are being quite loud and you're like nearby the place, then the comments will actually notice you. Yeah, um as you can tell from there. But um thing is with this camp is that you can pretty much just arrow this down and a bunch of TNT will explode. I picked up the wrong bow. Here we have a blue bacoblin. Oh, we'll blow up some of the stuff inside. Should probably get some of the stuff inside. The red bacoblin did die with this place. Oh wait. Oh yeah. This blue bacoblin does. Not all bacoblins like have an upgrade weapon compared to other ones in this game, but this blue bacoblin indeed does. Yeah, Boltan is extremely like useful when going up against enemies. Um, Spike Boko Cub. So this is, Spike Boko Cub is like the strongest weapon you'll get on the plateau, and has twelve um, damage. I just want to see if we can like options. Yes, use amiibo. Okay, yeah, we can. You can use amiibos to pretty much spawn items. If you like have a specifically a uh, Link or Zelda amiibo or some other amiibo relevant to the game, they all each do like their they all each spawn like in in different clothing or weapons. One of them spawns in a Pona, which is a horse, um, Link's famous horse from previous games, and other ones um spawn in like. There's, um, 
One of them spawns in the Twilight Bow, which is a uh, cool bow and also fun and unique compared to all the weapons in the game. Here we have the bomb trial, um, or like the place before the bomb um, shrine. This place is quite unique, and you'll see why. There's also a, another DLC chest here, but anyway. Let's, all oh right, also in the spring. I'm just passing by. Oh no, that thing is going to kill me. These are stationary guardians. They um shoot late, they charge a laser at you, then shoot them, and they do a lot of damage. However, using a shield or whether you just attack them enough, you can pretty much one-shot them with a parry or just um bash them until their death. You, when you um when you use it uh when you shoot their eye with an arrow they will get confused for a while. These are the weakest one of these guardians. Um I missed my parries. I kind of wanna parry this guy and just one shot with him. And it really isn't that hard to do by the way. It's like it's not a hard trick at all just parrying guardians. You might need to get used to the timing when you, like, first play. Yep, I did it, but thing is... What... Since I'm using a weaker shield right now... It can't, like, actually, like, block the Guardian's stuff. I can't use the updraft because... Yeah, I'm just not gonna be able to do enough damage to this. Um, we're just gonna ignore this guardian for now. When we just fall off this um, thing over here, they won't be able to see us. But the game grants us another piece of clothing that we will not be using because clothing is unnecessary. Who needs clothes? Anyway, bombs can be used to explode up barrels like the ones before, and we can get items out of it. And can also be used to ex they're, they're like some like yeah pretty much like rocks with like cracks on them the bombs can be used to explode those and using bombs is also a certain glitch you can do called wind bomb which i cannot do at all i did try to attempt it a couple of times but i'm just not able to do it In order to one bomb, you do need um, you do need uh to use bullet time in order to do it. And let's see if I can actually get it off. Um, there are two bomb rooms, so okay, I missed the jump. He dropped a bomb. Okay, I ended up killing myself and freezing myself in time, it seems. Um. I don't think I could do it on this ledge. Yeah. I think it has to be like more of an edge. But yeah, I just like can't do most of these glitches at all. However, I will try to do them. To so just fool around with them. I completely, I have no idea what I'm doing. But behind here, here there is a chest. Travelers play more. Let's get rid of one of our, um, the Coblin Arms because I don't want any, I don't want a skeleton in my inventory. Okay, in order to do this puzzle, it's simple. You either throw a bomb on top of the platform, pretty much just blow it up, or you pretty much just stay here and just decide when to throw the bomb yourself, which saves time. 
Okay, maybe I'll be able to do the one bomb from here. I screwed up. Thing is, normally the um the first bomb is just supposed to be higher than the second one. And then you're supposed to explode it. Um So pretty much you have to while you're still gaining them, while you, when you first jump you have to use a circle. Then you use the square after. Nope, I still cannot do it. Anyway, I have no idea what that orb is used for. I think it's kind of just there to be there, that like red circle thing. Over here. Like, has, there's like, normally when you see those orbs, there's like, like a hole for you to put it in that like activates like some sort of chest or other thing that allows you to progress through the shrine. But there, we're not see, but there is not, that isn't in this particular shrine. Anyway, the actual solution to doing this is you're just supposed to, there is this useless thing where you're supposed to like roll the circle bomb in, but you can pretty much easily just go like place a bomb like in that crap without using this to help you, so it's kind of, that thing's kind of unnecessary. Anyway, let's try this again. Nope. I got it. I, I got it. However, I did hit the wall, but I still got it that time. Okay, that was not it at all. Yeah, I'm kind of wasting food here, but um. Nope. This is probably too close. Oh, I didn't even use that square bomb. I'm gonna have to finish this drive up because the video is already um, 20 minutes long. Oh, wait. Oh, it's just spawned me at the start. Um, oh, that's just boring. Hey, maybe I can win bomb. This might actually work. Nope, that did not work. But maybe I can just win bomb over that platform. Nah, I can't. The same as a joke. Um, but yeah, you could just. Isn't not like an actual puzzle. You can just easily get. Oh, this is. Mm, this is just annoying. If you hit the sprint button while holding a bomb, it just goes back without like going on cooldown. just can't do it. Sometimes it like does two hard, sometimes it only does one, which I don't really get. I did do it that one time, so I could do it again. What am I doing? I don't know what I was doing that time. I think I got it. Okay, I didn't indeed get it, but I still wasn't able to go high enough to get past the platform, but I still did do the wind bomb. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Don't really like know how to angle it to get height, but like, 
Nah, this also isn't gonna work. But at least I'm knowing what's like gonna work and what's not gonna work at this point. Like before I had like no knowledge on this, this glitch. This this is definitely not gonna work, yeah. Okay, I got it two times so far. This probably won't work. Yeah. I wonder if I can just like get rid of this thing down here. Yes, I can. Then I can pretty much just hide behind here. Okay, one last time. Mm, that's not gonna work. But um, yeah, I just I'm just terrible at performing glitches in like every game. Fall damage cancel was rather easy, though. And we get our second shrine done now. Two more shrines to go. Pretty much all of, like, the monks at the end have the same, like, rant. And you always get, like, the spirit world at the end of the ritual. There are, like, different kinds of, like, as you, There are, like, different ty types of, like, shrines. There's some where you're supposed to, like, attack, go against an enemy. There are also, like, some where you just... Where you, there's, like, a long trial beforehand, and you pretty much just... After that trial, you pretty much just get a free... A chest for free, and the spirit orb for free without any obstacles. And there are also some with like a bunch of obstacles within. And there are also some with like unique like gimmicks. But I'm gonna end it here. We've been playing for like over 20 minutes again. I I don't know like how like so much time has gone past. But like let's end it with a view.